It was really great to see our own Larry Goldberg on Yahoo Finance this morning answering their questions about tough auto sales quarter from Tesla. Um, better to see Larry than some of the other folks that typically from the community are getting on these major stations. Larry pointed out that energy storage, charging stations, and FSD are all seeing big gains, and that Cybertruck and Model 3 Plus are just getting started. Go, Larry. <laughs> Over in the Tesla commuter on X, however, there are about 25 opinions about what went wrong in quarter one, and those opinions are all over the place. One thing is undeniable, and you can cut it any way you want. The lost unit sales were all Model Y. Tell me where I'm wrong down in the comments. I don't know. The one thing I can't figure out is that I'm the only one shouting this number. The only one shouting this reality is that it was all Model Y. It has nothing. Model 3 Plus is doing great. <laughs> the Cybertruck is doing great. Charging stations are doing great. Energy storage is doing great. I'm sure the Model S and X, to the extent that it, it makes any difference at all, not, not a problem. It's all the Model Y. Now, the reason why the Model Y sales are down could be, I guess, that's up for discussion. You know, interest rates, Elon's politics, uh, EV interest waning for, you know, a time for a, sh for a short time, or maybe maybe it's a bigger deal. Lots of units on ships compared to usual, usual, the Red Sea issues. I could go on and on. I could make a very long list of the reasons why Model Y sales are down. I continue to believe that the real issue this quarter was the Model Y in Europe and the United States, and that would be from the cannibalization of the Model Y sales by the Model 3 and the Cybertruck. If you didn't hear me talking about this yesterday, there's a video you can go take a look at. But basically, if I'm sitting here today and I'm in the market for a Tesla EV and I'm looking at the massively cool tech that's available and the and the great ride and the quiet interiors and the rear um, the rear seat screens and all of the stuff that's going into the Cybertruck and all the amazing stuff that's going into the Model 3 Plus, and I'm not really that concerned about whether I get a, uh, a, a SUV looking car, I'm okay with a sedan or a truck, I'm gonna go for the Cybertruck or for the Model 3. And that means I'm gonna put off, and maybe, maybe I was planning to buy a Model Y and I'm going, what? No, the Model Y is, needs a refresh. It needs to get all the cool stuff that's on the CT and on the Model 3 Plus. Anyway, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that Tesla will recognize this and shift some resources immediately to getting that done ASAP. This is what they're known for. They're known for fast iteration. I'm calling on you, Elon, once again, get it done. I'm also continuing to call for the sales and marketing department to figure it out or, or, or fire them and get another sales and marketing department. The reality of Tesla's future, on the other hand, and I think the reason why the stock is holding up so well, is that it doesn't really matter what happens with the Model Y in Q1 of 2024. What matters is, do you believe that FSD will happen? If you believe it'll happen, you know what to do. If you think robo-taxes will happen, you know what to do. Optimus, is Optimus going to be a thing in 2025? Energy storage will it continue to ramp to huge numbers. How about the Cybertruck? Is it going to be a huge success or not? What do you think about the Gen 3 vehicle? Everybody seems to think that's going to be a very big deal with the unboxing process and all the other knowledge that Tesla has just put into the Model 3 and the Cybertruck. Yeah. The Semi? What's going to happen with the Semi? It's going to be coming out later this year in bigger numbers. The charging stations, what do you, anyway, just uh, kind of go down the list. I, I don't even have the whole list here. Do you believe that these things are going to happen or don't you? It's not about Model Y deliveries in Q1 of 2024. Well, Gene Munster says it this way. He says, ugly March deliveries. By the way, if you want to follow him on X, it's at Munster underscore Gene, G-E-N-E, -E, that kind of gene. Okay, ugly March delivery numbers for Tesla down 8.6 year over year versus consensus of up 2%. I believe the reason is a combo of high interest rates impacting EVs that tend to be 10% more expensive than the average gas vehicle. Also, the excitement around EVs has cooled, which further dampens sales. Okay, see, 
there you go. <laughs> Many will compare this to BYD that reported March 24 deliveries up 13% year over year. I feel that's an unfair comparison given the strength of EVs in China outpaces the rest of the world. Rivian's March deliveries were up 70%, but that's off base because they only sold 8,000 trucks last year in the quarter. As for the balance of 2024, I believe Tesla delivery expectations are too high with the street looking for 19% year over year revenue growth. My sense is the number will be lower, close to 10%. And I think that the 20% number is a minimum. Downward adjustments to number will likely further pressure sh shares coming up in the future, unless you happen to believe the whole list of things I just gave you a minute ago. In 2025, the comps get easier, and I believe growth will be closer to 20% in 2025, and I think it will be much bigger than that. Street is expecting 19.4% in 2025. This from Esak Alzwami. Whether some surface is drivable or not is all contextual. We typically don't want the car to drive on dirt. But since the paved road is closed, in the particular example he's citing, the car needs to drive on dirt. The same logic also applies to, for example, mounting small curbs to avoid a larger obstacle. So collision avoidance cannot be absolute, the absolute objective, but a relative one. The actual objective is minimizing risk of injury slash property damage while still getting to the destination. It requires a lot of intelligence to assess this risk accurately. This comes naturally to humans and is now obvious to the car's AI and is now obvious to the car's artificial intelligence. Well, there you go. There's what Asak has to say on it anyway. This is Randy Kirk. Please hit the like button. Just, you know, take a second. It doesn't hurt. It helps me hit the subscribe and then notify because guess what? Yeah, it's a chock full day to day. Scott Walter earlier, I mean, in just a little while, around 11 o'clock California time, and then Jeff Lutz around 4.35 o'clock California time. You know you're going to want to hear from Scott and Jeff today based on what's been going on. All right. Um, and also, you know, hit that, uh, go on down, find the Patreon, and uh, go ahead and sign up for Patreon. That'd be great. You can just hit the link. And then, uh, by the way, another order yesterday for uh, cyber truck bottle opener. If you haven't bought yours, you know you want one. All right, we've got Tesla Rati with this this morning on RBC Capital Values. They say, I'm sorry, with RBC Capital, they value Tesla's progress and autonomy, our full self driving, above the company's car business. By the way, so does Elon Musk. RBC Capital believes that Tesla's one month free FSD trial might be the catalyst in quarter two of 2024. Remember what I said about a week ago is that the, the and Jeff Lutz seconded the, the idea, is that it's one thing to say you're going to get more uptake on the FSD uh, product, but it's another thing to say that the FSD product is going to cause an increase in interest in the entire product line and even drive more Model Y sales even without the upgrade, but it would be so much better to have both. All right. They say, worst case, Tesla FSD brings folks into the showroom. And best case, it increased the, FAD, the FSD attach rate and possibly increases three slash wide deliveries, wrote RBC Capital analyst Tom Narayan. Narayan, I guess it is. We also value autonomy above the car business and think the FSD free trial could potentially be more, more important for the Tesla investment thesis longer term than quarter one's delivery miss. Oh, oh, really? Is that what they think? Narayan reiterated the investment bank's outperform rating for Tesla and released a price target of 290 bucks. Last month, he increased Tesla's price target by $1 from 297 to 298. Despite his positivity towards Tesla, Narayan commented that sentiments toward the company are negative right now since it reported softer than expected delivery. Yeah, that's true. BYD delivery reports for March 2024. This from Tesla Rati. Tesla's quarter one 2024 delivery saw an 8.5% year-over-year decline. It delivered approximately 386,800 vehicles in the first quarter. Tesla Model 3 and Model Y vehicles accounted for most vehicle deliveries. Other Tesla models like the Cybertruck Model S, Model 
Model S and Model X accounted for just 17,000 deliveries. The investment bank enumerated a few factors that might have affected Tesla's deliveries in the first quarter, including factory shutdowns due to the arson attack on the Giga Berlin and shipping issues caused by the Red Sea conflict. It also factored in pre-buy coming in from quarter four, 2020, uh, 20, two, 2023, because the Model 3's tax credits from the Inflation Reduction Act were expiring. How? Ever, RBC Capital does, does wonder if Tesla was also hit by the EV demand slowdown in the United States. Well, there you go. I just wanted to get all, everybody's opinion in this morning. <laughs> Oil, okay, now we're going to turn to the economy. I want you to pay special attention to this section. This is really, really, really important, what I'm going to say. I mean, everything I say, of course, is important, but we really need to pay attention to what's going on in the economy right now because... Yeah. Okay. Oil deliveries down in the U.S. as the economy continues to perk along better than expected. More upward pressure on oil prices. Oil inventories down. Okay. Cobasi letter says, breaking oil prices have officially broken above $85. This would be Texas Intermediate for the first time since October 2023. Since the December 2023 low, oil prices are up over 25% as geopolitical tensions have escalated. That's only a minor part of the reason why oil prices are up. With China stimulus, uh, China manufacturing picking up, U.S. manufacturing picking up, uh, unexpectedly good business uh, climate in the United States, um, Russia dropping their price, I mean, I'm sorry, dropping by 500,000 a day, an, uh, another 500,000 barrels a day. It goes on and on. And by the way, there's a meeting today of OPEC. I haven't seen the result, any results on that yet. This comes as PPI, CPI, and PCE inflation all posted year-over-year -year increases in February. Demand forecasts are being raised and supply disruption risks continue to rise. Higher oil prices are simply just the new normal in the post-pandemic world. The fight against inflation is far from over. I agree now, okay? I, 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 the inflation problem, oil is the main thing. Oil is huge and it's a, you can't not pay attention to what's happening with oil. Market Watch has this to say, economists pulled by the Wall Street Journal had a forecast gain of 155,000 from the ADP jobs report. That's what they were expecting. What they got was um, a revision of last month's up to 155,000, and in this month came in at 195,000, way above the 155,000 expectation. Key details, the gain in new jobs in March was led by leisure and hospitality, but the increase was broad-based. Service sector providers added 142,000 jobs in March. Meanwhile, goods producers added 42,000 jobs, with manufacturing adding just 1,000 jobs. Well, by company size, businesses in the medium category added 93,000 jobs in March, while large businesses added 87. Small firms, just 16,000 jobs. Keep in mind, that small and, and small and medium-sized businesses are the engine of the United States. The ADP data showed that wages were heating up. Wage gains for job changers rose sharply to 10%, the second straight increase in a row. And, and overall, the amount of increase for a month over a month was 0.5% again, way above what the Fed wants that to be. They want that to be around 0.5%. 3%. Big picture, the ADP data helped set the tone for expectations in financial markets ahead of the key non-farm payrolls report coming out Friday. The Economist survey, survey by the Wall Street Journal expect the government to report a slowdown in job growth to a still solid 200,000 in March compared with 275 in the prior month. The unemployment rate is expected to tick lower to 3.8 from 3.9 to 3, from 3 .9 in February. Maybe. We'll see what happens. There's an awful lot of evidence right now that jobs are holding in there pretty well, but I don't, I don't know. It's, a, it's such an interesting time where the numbers are not very clear to anyone. On Tuesday, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester said she expects the unemployment rate to rise as the year progresses 
That has been what I've been saying, but man, the numbers are starting to come in different. Anyway, Market Watch says this morning, a roughly 30% rally off the October low for the S&P 500 leaves stocks seemingly overdue for a pullback, says Sam Stovall, chief investment strategist at CFRA. In a phone interview, he said the key will be the 10-year treasury yield up again this morning, by the way. Indeed, it has been a sharp and set of jump in tre treasury yields, which move in the opposite direction to bond prices that widely viewed that that's widely viewed as the trigger for this week's equity stumble. The yield on the 10-year note was up 4.2 basis points near 4.37 Tuesday, and now up again above that on Wednesday after hitting a 2024 high shy of 4.4 earlier in the session. I think that's now beat. Okay, uh, he says rising yields can be a negative for stocks in part because they raise borrowing costs for companies, but primarily because they undercut the present value of future profit and cash flow that are a basis for equity valuations, especially on companies like Tesla. The speed of the rise can also be important. A rapid move in rates can spend ripples across other markets and it forces, and it forces investors and traders to liquidate other positions to meet margin calls or rebalance their portfolios. Meanwhile, a jump in oil prices in response to rising fears of a broader conflict in the Middle East is helping to drive up yields and weighing on equities, analysts said. Okay, so uh, there's probably going to be a pullback in the equities market. We've seen two days, looks like a third day, although things were flat when I last looked, but let's see where the markets are now. We have got Tesla down $2.61, uh, and but it is turning the corner and heading back up again. Um, I It was uh, earlier this morning, it was uh, just barely down. So this is a little bit stronger down than it was. With the NASDAQ down 54 this morning, the S&P down four, and the Dow Jones up slightly, up $5.60. You got Apple up a bit this morning. The rest... Well, we've got uh, yeah the the uh, Meta is the is Meta and Apple are both up Meta up strongly the rest of the Magnificent Seven are down we have got the Kathy Woods all down except for PayPal being up one cent <laughs> but the rest of the Kathy Woods stocks are all down this morning so I would say the mood and the move this morning is still down although more tentative certainly than yesterday. Um, but the question is, is this a long-term um, correction? And corrections typically will be 5 10 or 20%. Or will this just be a hiccup? Will this just be uh, uh, taking a breather on this 30% increase that we've seen in the S&P? Uh, all right, let's go in and, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do the percentages. Some of you so prefer the percentages. Dow Jones down 0.1%. NASDAQ down 0.3%, S&P down 0.06%, and Tesla down 0.69%. So slightly underperforming the NASDAQ this morning. All right, uh, so far, <laughs> let's go over to the bonds. We have the 10-year, not quite at 4.4, okay? Earlier, it was up uh, it was up a little more than it is now, up 2.8 basis points, however, at 4.393. The longs are all up, but for instance, the two-year is only up. Oh, as of this, it just changed to the two-year is unchanged right now. Uh, it's moving around a lot, so I'm not going to keep reporting on those moves. And the two-month is also basically unchanged. Um, so most of the movement right now in the 10-year, again, up 2.4%, not quite to 44 Okay, let's take a look at oil, which we've already reported is definitely headed up this morning, up 63 cents at 85.80. So we've cleared the 85s. We're now going towards the 86s. You've got Brent sitting at 89.71, just about to break through the 90s. Natural gas, uh, $1.87, call it $1.88 cent this morning, up 81, I'm sorry, 0.81%. Uh, we have got the steady dollar, steady dollar. Interesting that the dollar is steady given all of this. We have got gold up another 1470 to 2296, another all time high. This is something to watch. Oil prices, watch the oil prices. 
As Larry says, watch the copper prices. Copper prices up 2.17% this morning, 4.16 cents, $4.16. This is a big move right now on copper. And then you've got the Bitcoin this morning up 181. I'm sorry, boy, man, that's big changes, fast changes, 218 now. Anyway, 66,337 this morning. Um, moving back again to Tesla to see if it is changing much. Uh, it is now back. You see, uh, it's really moving strongly toward the green, only down 63 cents at as we're reporting right now. Um, and I would say the trend line right now, in fact, the NASDAQ has now switched into the green. S&P is switched into the green. Dow is now up 114 points. A very, very fast move. Uh, the Fed was Fed chief was supposed to speak this morning. I don't think that's happened yet, but there could be other news breaking because everything is definitely moving up quickly right now. Uh, Dow Jones up 114, NASDAQ up eight, S&P up 11, and Tesla still sitting down 0.55, but the the uh, Magnificent 7 now has switched mostly into the green. So anyway, fast moving stuff going on, but I have to uh, tell you that yesterday I did a comprehensive analysis on the quarter one miss. If you missed that, I'm going to put the card right up there. I also did a Brian White video as always on Tuesday. And by the way, it was one of the best ever. And so I'll, you know, I'll put both cards up. That way you can choose between them or do both. That'd even be better. Um, hit the like, hit subscribe if you haven't already done that. And then hit notify because we got Scott Walter and Jeff Lutz coming later today. And the market's still doing just about what I said a minute ago, so I won't update that any further. It has been great talking to you.